Very warm greetings of the day. I'm Dr. Reena Unyal Tiwari, Associate Professor in the Department of Teacher Education at DAV PG College, Dehradun, Uttarakhand, India. So it is a very uh, nice opportunity to interact with the international students for the very first time. I have been academic counselor at IGNU since last 25 years or so in uh, different courses, especially MA education, MED, BED, PGDHT, PGDSLM. And uh, I have interacted uh, with the international students before when I was as a student at Udaipur. We have got many international students, especially from Nigeria in our university. And uh, they were pursuing their masters in particle science, sociology, philosophy, and so on. So a very warm greetings to everyone. Uh, can you see the slides, dear students? Yes, please, we can see the slides. Okay. okay. So in MES 004, which is head teachers at school leaders, I have been assigned block two, that is principles and techniques of school management. And I will be discussing unit five, six, seven, eight, nine, five units in three counseling sessions. Today, we will discuss unit five and unit six. Then next time, unit seven and eight. And in the last counseling session, unit nine. During each counseling session, I would like to uh, discuss a bit about the topic. And then we can have the question answer session. And uh, after that, we will move on to the next unit. As you can see, the unit five, it deals with the delegation of responsibilities. You all know that as head teachers, uh, it is very essential that all of us, when we are functioning as the head of the institution, cannot do each and every task and responsibility by ourselves. Because the head teacher, the principal, is very much involved in the day-to-day -day functioning of the school, the administration process, meetings, taking decisions, uh, talking to the senior officials, board, management, so the head teacher cannot think and is, it is not possible at all to do all the activities, all the responsibilities and tasks of the school by himself or herself. And for that, it is very essential that the different tasks and the responsibilities are handed over in phased manner to the teachers and the subordinates who are working. So we can say that delegation of responsibility is very essential. And what is delegation? It is the process of transferring part of authority to subordinates. And here the subordinates can be the teachers, the conveners in charges of different committees. And these responsibilities are delegated by the school head and at the different levels of management. And it is essential for the performance of task and responsibility. As we know that if the students are to be taken for a science exhibition, even if he wants, and if, even if he is willing to do, he or she is willing to do, the head teacher won't be able to uh, help the students in preparing the science projects and then selecting the students for an exhibition and then taking the students along with him or her. So it is very essential that he or she delegates the responsibility to the science teacher or the in charge of a, a science club so that they can do their responsibilities in a convenient way. And then the head teacher will be relieved of this particular responsibility. In the same manner, we can see that the delegation is very, very important. And why it is important? 
because it is an effective way to manage school functioning and the head teacher gets more time to concentrate on other important matters which cannot be dealt by or done by other subordinates or the teachers of the institution and by delegating the responsibilities the subordinates the other teachers of the school uh, the official staff the clerical staff the laboratory staff the sports in charges and the in charges of various clubs they feel part and equal partners of the institution by delegating the responsibilities cooperation and team spirit it is also uh, it is also encouraged in among the teachers when they are delegated some responsibilities they work as a team and then it is possible only when they cooperate with each other the delegation also delimits the physical and mental workload on one person if all the activities all the task all the responsibility or maximum responsibilities of the institution are being performed by one head teacher so it will be very difficult it will be mentally and physically very tiring so delegation is essential and by delegating the responsibilities even the junior members of the institution be it they uh, may be conveners they may be uh, graduate teachers they may be primary level teachers they all when are given responsibilities they learn how to handle challenges they get trained to perform different task as well as gradually by performing those tasks again and again even they develop expertise in those task and for this it is very essential that the head teacher should understand the staff until and unless the head teacher doesn't know what are the needs of individual teachers what are the characteristics what are the aspirations what are the abilities and competencies in which they are very good he or she cannot delegate the responsibility to a particular teacher so understanding the teachers is very essential and there are some principles of delegation how to delegate responsibilities whom to delegate responsibilities so that it is very much uh, important for the institution to and for this the main attention should be given to the priority to the benefit of the organization so the different individuals who are delegated responsibilities should be such ones who always work towards the benefit the organization should get benefited and for this the head teacher need to uh, describe the nature and scope of the work to the subordinates whatever task is being given to any individual teacher needs to be clearly defined for example if i as a head teacher is giving some responsibility to a teacher uh, to organize a sports event to so one single teacher cannot organize the whole event so i need to make a sports committee a sports competition committee in which one is the convener and what is the work of the convener what task the convener needs to uh, do or plan should be told to him or her very very clearly and then what task should be given to other committee members even that needs to be clearly defined now how to select a personnel it depends upon the knowledge competence commitment and capabilities of the individual uh, subordinate or the teacher for example if i want to delegate a task related to science exhibition to obviously a teacher who has uh, got some experience of organizing such events as well as the teachers who is related to the science subject will be more important and will be more uh, helpful for conducting such kind of competition in case i want the uh, teachers to take the students for an educational trip so the teacher who is a a very good planner who has got a very good rapid formation with the students who knows about that particular place should be delegated the responsibility 
and uh, the head teacher needs to give utmost importance to the trust and cooperation until and unless there is no trust and cooperation between different uh, um, individuals or different personnel of an organization for example uh, when we are talking about the school uh, so the uh, subordinates will be the different teachers working in different departments teaching different classes the class teachers the conveners of different committees so all of them should work in such a cooperative way so that even the head teacher can trust uh, their abilities and uh, the head teacher can uh, now feel that if i have delegated some task to them they'll certainly do it in the best possible manner that trust needs to be built and that trust needs to be uh, imbibed or needs to be uh, the head teacher needs to be uh, very much uh, attentive to this thing that uh, i trust all my teachers and they are going to do this in the best possible manner and if we want that the delegated task is progressing in the right direction in the positive manner it is very essential in the part of the head teacher to progress the uh, to control the progress and to control the progress the feedback mechanism which is called as regular reporting is very essential if we are going to organize a very um, to a very large level or to a very large extent we want to organize a cultural competition in the school and different individuals are delegated task so they need to report back to the head of the institution how much work is already being done what is in the progress and what more we need to do in the coming uh, days or the coming time so regular reporting and the feedback is very essential then only the head teacher can control the progress and if there are some uh, drawbacks if there are some lacuna they can be immediately uh, sought out the willingness to carry the task is very important as a head teacher if i am assigning the responsibility or delegating the task to any individual teacher or the subordinate i as a head teacher need to understand and know first whether the person is willing or not so willingness is very important and for that i need to motivate people to participate not only a handful of teachers i should select and delegate all the task to them only the others will feel uh, left out so even if there is a new teacher who doesn't uh, uh, know that particular task or haven't done it before he or she can be motivated by the head teacher along with the senior teachers that you will learn it and you will be able to perform it only if you try so motivating maximum individuals to participate in the day to day functioning of the school is very important and we all know that uh, until and unless our work is being appreciated enough or some kind of reward it is not only that a monetary reward needs to be given but in uh, if in some uh, school assembly or in some uh, function in which parents and the people from society are also invited or their families are invited or uh, some sort of smaller big functions of felicitation programs need to be organized in the school so that Uh, the performance of the teachers is appreciated as well as they are rewarded because it will act as a positive feedback to the subordinates and the teacher and they will be more than interested and very keen to uh, perform the task uh, in a better way but when the head teacher is uh, delegating the task to different individuals or the subordinates there may be some barriers to jaise uh, i have already talked that if there is lack of mutual trust and understanding uh, between the head teacher and the subordinates so uh, it will not be possible for the head teacher to delegate any responsibility or the task because uh, it can be both way neither the teachers uh, trust the hod or uh, nor the uh, head of the institution understands the uh, different teachers or their needs or their expertise their competence so mutual trust and understanding is lacking then it will be a barrier in the same way sometimes the head teacher has a fear that uh, the teachers who have been assigned the work would not be able to complete the task that fear can be on the teachers part too one more thing 
the head teacher may think that if i am uh, giving and delegating the responsibilities to different individuals and the subordinates so the sometimes it may happen that i can lose the power or the authority the teachers are themselves able to uh, delegate the task or perform in a, a better way so these are the fears on the part of the uh, head of the institution which can be a barrier along with this if the head teacher or the principal we can say the headmaster if he is failing in uh, certain areas for example if he or she is not able to plan ahead what are the different tasks what are the different responsibilities which need to be delegated and how they need to be delegated and to whom they should be delegated if no plan is being made by the head teacher then it is a barrier in the same way sometimes day to day task is being uh, delegated but what is the reason for that what is the long term objective the head of the institution need to achieve so when she or he is not able to transmit the larger plan to the subordinates even then uh, the effective delegation is not possible if there is no system of reporting what should be the system of reporting and it should be an effective system so if there is no reporting system there is no definition of how reporting should be done and a good system is not developed time to time reporting which i was talking about as feedback if that is not developed by the head teacher so uh, it may um, fail in the process of delegation because when reporting is not being being done in time to time and uh, what lacuna we are facing what are the drawbacks if they are not considered and removed the task cannot be done in an effective way so these are the different barriers and for this delegation of task delegation of responsibilities a system need to be developed and this system is uh, being developed by the head of the institution according to their experience their expertise and their understanding of the subordinates so first of all what is most essential is that how a uh, different jobs have to be done they need to be streamlined we have uh, known we have seen that in the education system or the school system there is a hierarchy there is a principal the headmaster and then the subordinate the vice principal can be there there can be heads of different departments humanities sciences commerce and then there can uh, can be a uh, class teachers and then there can be subject teachers like this as well as <clears throat> the work should be delegated through the committees there can be different committees for the uh, for the examination system there can be an examination committee uh, there can be a sports committee or discipline committee uh, cultural activities committee uh, educational tour committee uh, as well as uh, some other committees which are uh, related to the uh, proper functioning of the school the uh, maintenance of records so there can be different committees and working through the committees uh, if such a system is developed in the school so the delegation of task becomes very easy because the head teacher has to uh, delegate the task to the different committees and then the different committees and their conveners delegate the task in hierarchy to different individual teachers who have report who have to report back to the conveners and the convener report it to the uh, head teacher so the it is a convener who coordinates the functioning and then the delegation of task becomes very easy uh, i can give example of a, a particular school from uh, at uh, where i had worked during the examination system they had uh, a whole committee and the convener used to uh, organize meeting and tell all the individual teachers who were part of the examination committee that uh, at which particular time and um, the all the different subject teachers of the classes <coughs> need to submit their question papers who will be the person who will be responsible for the printing of the question papers there will be a uh, different uh, <coughs> places and the almiras for the papers of different classes and according to the date so that on the uh, particular date on the right date the right paper is being opened 
and who will be the person who will be responsible so uh, different tasks related to the examinations were delegated with the help of convener and committees and they coordinated the functioning and then they had to report back to the examination controller or the head teacher uh, and for this the portfolio of the committee what will be the function of the committee and what are the rules even that is to be framed in advance when we are talking about developing a system so the system should act in such a way that all the process all the uh, functions or the responsibilities are delegated according to the competence and then there is a coordination between the different individuals so what each individual has to do what as a committee they have to do and what are the rules they have to abide by if all these are very very clear then the task is done in a very effective way and there is one more thing whenever any committee is made time to time some members of the committee can be changed some new members can be inducted in the committee who will learn about the functioning of the committee and some senior members who were part of the earlier committee should be retained so that they know what all has been done and how things are uh, being done what are the rules and then they can help the new members in their functions and uh, it can be a, a circular or a cyclic process like that new teacher new members are inducted a few members are the uh, older ones who uh, belong to the previous committee too and each new member remains for such a long for such a time that he or she reaches the uh, position of convener of the committee and then leaves so it will be a cyclic process so that new teachers new members should also know about the responsibilities functions of a committee and for that the record of the work done should be kept in a very uh, efficient manner so what are the uh, what are the different functions or what are the different rules of a sports committee if it is noted down for a particular year what were the different sports in which students were selected who were the coaches what were the timings uh, where the students were sent for competitions who went along with the students uh, what were the different uh, facilities provided to the teachers and the students for travel purpose and for coaching purpose uh, the uh, achievement of the students the different teams which won the teams which failed due to some reason what were the reasons behind it how uh, it can be uh, rectified if all the work done is kept in a record in a written record way then it will be easy for the committee to suggest for the future committees what was wrong uh, what we were lacking in what were the lacuna the uh, the areas in which we failed or we haven't done better and how they can be improved so uh, these are the different uh, uh, types of uh, committees which we uh, talked about and how system can be developed so uh, for uh, being an effective uh, leader we can say that uh, there are uh, some tasks which cannot be delegated there are many tasks which are delegated but there can be some tasks which cannot be delegated which we need to understand for example the teachers are if some teachers are to be recruited so the principal cannot delegate the task to uh, the subordinates as well as uh, when we are talking about how the new admission of students is being taken place the matters which are pertaining to finance uh, where uh, some expenditure is involved as well as when uh, there is a need of communication and the meetings to be done with the government officials school governing boards important committees so there are these are some kind of tasks which cannot be delegated even uh, we have to understand that only and along with this who can be an effective delegator to whom we can say that the head teacher is doing his duties uh, is performing his functions and duties and responsibilities as a head teacher in the most efficient way when he is an effective delegator when he is not doing everything by himself or herself otherwise he or she will be overburdened and the activities and the functioning of the schools will be affected so what need to be done is if the head teacher is able to motivate and stimulate the subordinates so that 
they volunteer for undertaking duties and responsibilities this is one quality of an effective delegator if the head teacher is able to indicate the time limit uh, in which a task or a responsibility is to be done and performed and what should be the level of the performance if he or she is able to clearly indicate uh, and percolate this to the subordinates then he or she will be an effective delegator along with it if the head teacher uh, monitors the task but doesn't interfere unnecessarily because if the head teacher keeps on interfering in the task and responsibilities being performed by the subordinates they won't be able to do their responsibilities in an efficient manner so it is essential that they should keep a check they should monitor the task but no uh, interference no uh, uh, interference uh, which can be called as an undue interference which is not required uh, which hinders the functioning of an individual such kind of nature is very essential the head teacher is the head of the institution and he has got he she has got a whole team of conveners teachers vice principals a clerical staff office staff support staff students so keeping the morale of the whole team up is very essential then we can say that he or she is an efficient delegator and uh, uh, by keeping the morale of the team high by not letting anyone <coughs> feel down or uh, such that uh, he or she is not able to do the duties in a proper way so head of the institution needs to be a morale booster to keeping everyone's morale very high and if any individual has done a task in an efficient way in a proper way and has uh, uh, put lot of efforts then it is essential for the head teacher to appreciate them appreciate the delegate appreciate the team appreciate the convener and it is also essential that he or she should act as a facilitator who is a, who is a facilitator who facilitates and the facilitator need to uh, provide assistance whenever and wherever required in any manner be it infrastructure or some substances or some suggestions or a, a proper uh, positive environment all these things can be done as a facilitator and every head of the institution should be open to suggestions by the subordinates it is not that only one way communication is being done because the individuals who are doing the job they are doing it in their highest capacity and because they have been doing it since last many years for or for some long time or have experience in it so they have very good suggestions if any improvement is to be done so head teachers needs to be very open for suggestions and some of the tasks uh, which he or she delegated to the subordinates or the teachers are not done in that way which he or she has desired or expected so he should accept that all the tasks cannot be done in the most efficient way there may be some lacuna there may be some misconceptions there may be some misunderstanding uh, there may be some drawbacks there may be some hindrances or barriers which affected the functioning of the responsibility so this acceptance is very essential and no mistake should be uh, allowed to remain so that it becomes a very huge mistake so for a head teacher checking time to time uh, that the mistake is not only identified but rectified too so small mistakes to identify them and then to rectify them at right time is also very essential and for this immediate reporting one thing and intermediate reporting that means when a task is being delegated or assigned to a committee or a teacher proper feedback proper reporting from time to time that time can be decided by the head teacher needs to be done and uh, the mistakes should be taken in such a way that the head teacher should uh, keep in her or his mind whether the uh, objective is 
better functioning or efficient functioning of the school or uh, or uh, instigating a teacher that or ridiculing a teacher that you haven't done it in a proper way so we have to recognize the mistakes we have to rectify the mistakes but what should be a proper way for that that we have to decide and uh, uh, the functioning of the school should not get affected by the mistakes that is also the responsibility of the delegator that is the head teacher and uh, as a effective delegator the head teacher needs to set up some things in the school in the institution one is what are the academic goals of the institution that should be very very clear along with it what are the social behavior goals how the students are going to behave with the teachers how the teachers are going to behave with their uh, subordinates and colleagues how they should behave with the parents that so or with the society that social behavioral goals as well as, as well as academic goals they should be very clear and the head teacher should be responsible for very effective order and discipline in the school that is alone uh, his or her task he or she can have very high expectations from the students for better performance in every field of life as well as from the teachers the atmosphere in the school or the institution is of a very caring nature that is also the responsibility of the head teacher public rewards and incentives should be given to the teachers as well as to the students who have been doing really well in academics and sports and science and uh, different fields academic leadership as well as administrative leadership both are the responsibilities of the head teacher and she and he should be uh, very much uh, aware of that and should work hard for that and uh, uh, proper learning time proper academic learning time a slot should be uh, provided to the students as well as uh, when we are talking about the timetable and the different co curricular activities being uh, being uh, arranged in the school here too the academic learning time shouldn't be uh, less so because if we want high academic achievement from the students and the teachers and the academic leadership is the responsibility of the head teacher so high academic learning time should be provided by him and students progress need to be monitored from time to time uh, i can give an example from my school days i have studied from a government school a kendra vidyalaya central schools they are called as central government run schools and we remember we had a principal professor tahir nayar Uh, when he joined our school we uh, saw that he used to write in each and every individual students uh, uh, progress report card too and for that he used to take suggestions from the class teacher and the subject teachers especially for the students uh, the students who were even for the students who were not academically good or were uh, lagging in the academic progress he used to write very motivating uh, notes and small instructions for those students too he used to come to our classes during the parent teacher meetings or uh, during um, the result announcement or before the examinations and was a great motivator and he used to feel invested in the student community so much that we as students were uh, were uh, very much uh, uh, motivated as well as his uh, uh, coming to the classrooms were very inspirational for us so the frequent monitoring of students progress is very essential uh, by the head teacher because ultimately the long term objective of the schools is the uh, progress of the students i'm not saying only academic progress but progress in every field of life and for that uh, the head teacher can facilitate the school environment with variety of teaching aids and different teaching strategies time to time a uh, training of uh, in service training of teachers uh, that even can also be um, uh, arranged for the teachers to learn new strategies for learning so that the academic progress and the learning of students is also uh, done in a better way so this is all about uh, uh, unit 5 that is delegation uh, delegating the responsibilities uh, now if we have can uh, if we have some questions from all of you i'll be more than eager to answer
Hello, dear students. Hello, dear students. If there is any question, no, my son, continue. No question. Yes. Maybe some observation or an experience you want to share. Uh, no for now. No. Yes. Uh, if, uh, uh, are you a school teacher? Are, are you working? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you are a school, uh, you are a class teacher, a subject teacher, or the head of the institution? A subject teacher. Which subject do you teach? Chemistry. Chemistry? To senior yeah. classes? Yeah, senior classes. Okay, okay. So good to know. So, uh, any responsibility or task delegated to you by your head teacher? Yes, I'm a class master. You are the class master, and the class master yeah. is responsible for for taking attendance of students. Yeah. Uh, observing the well-being of the student in the class. Okay, and what else? Yeah, and other responsibilities concerning the class. Okay. So, yeah. So what are sure your observations end. about the head teacher of your school? The head teacher in my school. You mean his capabilities? No, no, I want to ask about the delegation of responsibilities because we are discussing the topic now, delegation of responsibilities. So I want to know whether he delegates the responsibilities uh, in a effective manner or uh, there is some lacuna which you think should be changed. Yeah, in some cases, uh, he delegates some responsibilities to other teachers. But okay. uh, based on this, I learned that there is some addition in some places. There is area he needs to improve. Okay. And what you would have done if you uh, were the head teacher instead of uh, that particular person? Uh, I will be making delegation the supervision. I understand that when he assign a delegation, sometimes he make a committee. He give the committee maybe two weeks or one week to bring a report. But okay. sometimes it ends three weeks or more than the stated time without him going and check what happened what the problem so if i'm the head teacher i will make sure that the committee abide by the rules and regulation of the committee and submit their report within the time so you think the time given is less no it's not less but uh, the committee sometimes they didn't provide the report within the specified time okay okay and what about the trust and understanding between the teachers and the head teacher? There is good understanding. Very good. And does the head teacher understands uh, and knows the capacities and competencies of each and every individual teacher? There may be some different needs of the teachers according to their age, according to their home responsibilities. Is that taken into consideration too? Mm, I can see he he didn't know much about them okay okay any other student who would like to uh, share some experience hello are the others listening there are only two more three more Anyone else would like to suggest something or share some experience or any question if you have any question? No questions means only two things. Either you have understood each and every single word I spoke or you haven't understood at all. Well understood, Master. So nice of you. 
it was wonderful even hearing to your voice too uh, i think maybe because we are meeting for the very first time even if it is online even if it is online hello uh, we we are not uh, we are not comfortable enough to ask questions ma i have questions ma oh ho you have question please do ask ma you have question please do ask okay ma in my school ma uh, the head teacher uh, always res, uh, delegate uh, responsibilities to the teachers and she seems to overlight on that uh, delegation of responsibility is it good ma for the head sorry i couldn't hear uh, it uh, completely the voice is very really low the voice is very really low Can you hear me? The volume should be some more. The volume should Please be increase the volume. Please increase the volume. Okay, I said. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, my question is that: Is it good for the head teacher to be res uh, to be delegating responsibilities to her teachers? Is it good for her to be delegating and overlight on that delegation? Okay, actually, it is very essential for the head teacher to my, delegate responsibility. Yes. My okay. question is the that reason being that each and every task cannot be completed by the head teacher. Each and every task cannot be completed by the head teacher. Okay. okay. maybe some due to some disturbance i couldn't hear you correctly the exact question i couldn't hear or maybe i can't decipher it uh, can you write in the chat box can it be done you can send the queries through the lms too and i will try to answer i will try to answer okay okay i can write okay okay thank you thank you everyone now we should move to the next uh, uh, unit that is unit 6 abhi idhar aana beta okay now we'll start with unit 6 that is communication and negotiation unhone ka communication and negotiation and uh, as you all understand that uh, communication is the basic function of management and to be an effective educational manager that is the head of the institution effective communication is very much essential and <laughs> if we are talking about the communication process there are basically three things which are very much important one is what to communicate second one is how to communicate and the third one is what to expect from the communication what is it that you want to communicate and how it should be communicated in a written way a notice or a, some letter or uh, by email or in the uh, general public or announcement uh, being made in the uh, assembly or uh, during the meeting or one to one that is how the communication process should take place and the third one is what is the expectation that means when the head teacher is communicating something what he or she is expecting whether whatever she he or she has communicated has been understood by the individuals or not and they are understanding it doing the functions properly and responding in the positive way so a communication process needs three basic things and communication is basically the ability to express it is the ability to pass a message 
and uh, communication comes from the word common common mean means which is same uh, in all the individuals who are associated or who are together or who are communicating so that they reach a common understanding and when they are uh, reaching a common understanding uh, they can exchange their feelings their experiences and their thoughts so communication is expressing something these expressions uh, may be verbal as well as non verbal our screen is still showing development of system it is still showing development of system okay okay i'm sorry i'll do it again okay let me do it again uh, for me it is showing that I, i'll see i'll see what is happening i'll do it again okay let me see uh window where is it showing window we have to show it in the window can you see it right now okay i'll share it again share it i'll share present on in window a window window not entire screen a window and then presentation 6 okay yes presentation 6 share Uh, okay are you able to see it now yeah yeah now the unit 6 has started now the slide share has started now the slide share yes thank you thank you so much thank you for uh, giving me the right feedback at the right time <laughs> otherwise i would have continued it so thank okay. you thank you so much okay okay so we were talking about communication and negotiation that is the unit 6 and in this particular unit we will try to understand how as a head teacher it is the uh, moral responsibility and is the uh, best way to uh, perform duties in the best possible manner when the head teacher is able to communicate in the most most positive way and about negotiation we'll talk about later and we were talking that communication is the basic function of educational management and in the communi communication process three things are very basic what to communicate what is it that you want to communicate how it should be communicated verbal non verbal in a meeting uh, announcement notice letter email telephonic communication and what we expect from the communication what will be the result of the communication and then we were talking about what is communication to so communication arises from a word common so when people are able to express themselves and they are able to pass a message through which they can reach a common understanding and in this process the exchange of feelings experiences and thoughts is being done okay and uh, uh, in the um, field of communication there are different ways in which we communicate sometimes when only two individuals two persons are communicating that can be called as a direct communication the head teacher is talking to the vice principal or a, a committee in charge so one to one direct communication in the same way when a teacher is talking to a student a teacher is talking to a parent a student is uh, uh, talking to a teacher so such kind of communication is called as direct communication one to one communication between two individuals sometimes the communication is done with a small group for example as a head teacher you are uh, uh, you want to communicate about the uh, coming sports event to the sports committee so in the sports committee there are, are more than 2 3 people so the principal is communicating about the whole process and the program and the work to be done to the small group uh, in the uh, or uh, sometimes the communication is being done in the public and it is a formal social situation we can say for example the principal uh, attends the school assembly and uh, uh, the whole group of students and and teachers and everyone present there is uh, publicly announced a particular kind of uh, event 
which is going to be held soon or uh, some responsibilities to be uh, performed by every individual so they, that can be a formal so social situation too and it may be planned in advance what is to be communicated to the whole public uh, sometimes the communication is in the organization itself for example in the school organization if staff meetings are being held so this can be called as a organization communication and uh, uh, such kind of communication is formal and it uh, may be structured and uh, mostly it is structured because already planning is done what is to be communicated and to what individuals and in this kind of organization communication it uh, mostly it is hierarchical hierarchical in the sense the principal communicates uh, to the the vice principal the vice principal communicates to the uh, examination department head and the examination department then head then communicates to the uh, different subordinates so it can be in a hierarchical position too or sometimes it uh, <coughs> can be from a lower level to the higher level for example the students of a class they communicate something to their class teacher the class teacher then uh, communicates to the discipline committee and the discipline committee in turn communicates to their head and the head of the discipline committee the convener then communicates to the principal and the principal may be in turn to the higher authorities so it is uh, from higher to lower or lower to higher and sometimes a uh, uh, communication can be lateral too uh, one more way of communication is mass communication uh, in which uh, mostly mass media is involved it is uh, most of the time formal it is organized and it is non personal uh, for example uh, through tv when it is communicated that uh, 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 a vaccination is drive to uh, is going to be held in a particular place such will be the timings these persons can come what is the way of registration and also such kind of mass communication is formal as well as organized and it is non personal because we are using a mass media which reaches to many many people and in this type of communication the communication is one way the uh, whatever is written in the newspaper or in a magazine or something in that uh, in tv uh, all that so the communication goes one way because the persons who are receiving the messages now they are not communicating again or back to the uh, individuals who have uh who have communicated them through the media okay so mass communication is one more way of communication and there are different elements in communication process and uh, there are basically eight basic elements the one is source source is the one who is the originator of the message uh, sender of the message we can say the one who is saying the message who is speaking the message uh, who wants to convey the message is the source the second element of communication is message and this message acts as a stimulus because the source who is the originator or sender of the message transmits the message to the receiver and this message acts as a stimulus for example uh, the uh, class teacher is the originator of the message and the receiver are the students the source is transmitting to the receiver and what he is transmitting is that all students should be ready for a class test of maths to be held two weeks later that message is a stimulus because that stimulus will arouse some responses from the students sir why are you conducting the test the test should be done we should be given some more time sir you have uh, scheduled the test after a very long gap please take the test immediately day after tomorrow or within two days or so so it, stimulus is something which evokes the responses there is a, a reaction to every action in the same way when we are talking about message the message is the stimulus the third basic element in communication is in encoding in which the message which we uh, intend to uh, transmit to the receiver it contains uh, some symbols and these uh, symbols can be languages basically language we are saying words and channel are the means by which the messages travel and these uh, channel can be mass media a letter a circular a notice put up on the uh, notice board any kind of announcement these all can be the channels by which the messages are uh, sent by the source 
receiver is the one who receives the messages sent by the source and the one who receives the message then decodes the message he understands the message and then they give feedback <coughs> in the same way decoding is another element it is the process by which symbols are interpreted by the receiver the notice uh, or the circular which is sent to the receivers and the receivers receive it and then they interpret it not everyone's interpretation can be the same how we receive a notice how we receive a message for example uh, i can give an example from a mass media a very simple thing if uh, something is uh, uh, said in a sarcastic way uh, or uh, 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 some uh, some uh, simulation is being given is being uh, given in the message everyone need not interpret it in the same way so decoding is the process which can differ from the uh, individual to individual receiver in the in which they interpret the message or receive the message uh, then the next element of communication is feedback so when the receiver is receiving some message then what is their output and sometimes when they give another message it indicates the effectiveness of communication okay a message is being sent by the source to the receiver through different channels every message doesn't uh, evoke a response sometimes a message evokes a response and another message is given to the individual who has sent the message so that means the message is effective the message is effective then only it has evoked a response from the receivers so the another message which is sent by the receiver again to the uh, sender so that way we can call it as a two way communication when there is a feedback and when there is no feedback it is one way communication we can take an example if there is some survey or <clears throat> if there is some report on a, a certain disease or a certain uh, a certain uh, policy of the government and if it is given uh, in the newspapers and people are reading it through the newspaper sometimes uh, people write letters to the editors and uh, during their letters to the editors they have written about that particular government policy it's a good things it's bad things they have critically analyzed the policy and given a letter which is being uh, uh, published in the uh, paper which is being printed in the paper in the uh, readers column then we can say that it is a two way communication again people are reading it but sometimes the messages are circulated or sent in such a way that the one who are receiving them they do not give any kind of feedback so that way we can say that it is a one way communication only okay sometimes during the communication process uh, there can be many factors which interfere in receiving the messages and the message is uh, distorted to such a extent that we are not able to understand the exact message so that can be called as noise noise is again an element in the communication process for example uh, there is a uh, cultural program of junior students going on in the school premises and the senior students are having a class of uh, uh, english literature or mathematics any such kind of class but the music is coming in between uh, so the students are not able to listen to the message what the teacher is trying to say or the teacher is trying to communicate so here the noise is the factor that is interfering in receiving the message then we can talk about the types of communication basically communication can be of two basic types one is called as verbal communication and the another one is non verbal communication and as the name implies in the verbal communication the basic unit is language and language is words and symbols so when through language feelings emotions 
and intentions are shared we use speech for that we use language for that for example uh, when i am uh, interacting with you people and i am showing my powerpoint slide along with the powerpoint slide i am also speaking about what that slide uh, contains or what that uh, slide uh, want to tell you about so the words i am using are the intentions are my intentions and these are communicated to you through the language which i am speaking and uh, because <clears throat> the common language between us is english so even if i have some better words in my own mother tongue or my own language for that i won't be speaking those because you won't be able to understand you know so the verbal communication is basically through the language the speech and the language here for us the a common language through which we can communicate with each other is english okay another kind of communication is non verbal communication in which sometimes you see that uh, i stop or i uh, i speak a particular word uh, with some stress or some intonation that is the vocal cues uh i'm not able to see in each and every individual's eyes but uh, during the direct communication or in the classrooms you must be having eye contact with your students and with just a flicker of the eye or the facial expressions the students can get what the teacher expect from us if we are uh, looking at a individual student who is not paying attention and uh, when whenever his eyes or his gaze meet, meets us and by our eyes contact only we just uh, through a facial expression we uh, show whether whatever he or she is doing is correct or not and uh, the student understands that that is the non verbal communication so basically two types of communication and we use both there are different factors which influence the effectiveness of communication we have already talked about there are three things Uh, how to communicate what to communicate and what should be expected in the same way whether the communication will be effective or not effective it depends upon different things and uh, the basic uh, thing we can basic uh, uh, factors we can talk about it one is the source of the communication from where the message is coming if we see that the source is reliable if uh, the credibility of the source is very high we intend to listen to the message and we uh, and we uh, try to uh, and we try to do according to the message so the credibility of the source it is very important when there is some message through the national newspapers or the national television or uh, some person who is uh, an expert of that particular field so the when the source is credible we we'll listen to that message another thing is the attractiveness of the message uh, and attractiveness of the message also depends upon the person who is communicating the source the sender the initiator of the message if the body language is very positive if he or she has a voice modulation and the terms are spoken in a very correct way there is no interference or sound from anywhere and the presentation style is very interesting we intend to listen that message and understand it very easily so the source of communication is very important the other one is the content of the message if the message has some novelty there is something new which we already uh, do not know there is something new in it which we haven't ever heard uh, then the novelty as well as the person who is uh, uh, who is the initiator or the source of the message if they speak the message or if they present the message in a such a manner that an emotional connect is being formed it uh, seems as a emotional appeal and the message has got a positive tone then the message is more effective sometimes we see that uh, during the communication process when the messages are being uh, uh, messages are being uh, transferred from one individual to another individual there are many arguments in it but if the number of positive arguments is more so the message has a positive tone and then it is considered as an effective message sometimes there may be unintentional distortions for example uh, if i am biased 
I am biased about something, and I uh, I will listen only what I want to listen. There is something which I am not at all interested, and I don't. Uh, I am not interested in that individual, or I am not interested in that particular message. So this can be considered as an unintentional distortion because then it will uh, then it will affect the uh, affect the message. Uh, such that they, they, that we are not ready to hear it. We'll hear only what we want to listen or what we think that it is important to us. For example, there is an announcement in the class, and that uh, uh, convey of message is about uh, a practical examination to be held, and uh, the date is announced for uh, uh, for students from roll number one to seven only. So when I am hearing the first line for roll numbers one to seven, so I am roll number twelve. the student i am roll number 12 so because that is not of my use i am not involved in it i think it is not uh, positive for me and it is not uh, going to help me in any case so i won't be hearing it or i won't be giving it uh, my attention so that can be considered as an unintentional distortion Uh, that is the reason sometimes we say that whenever we are talking to the children we will should talk to the whole children as a group especially in the classroom uh, while communicating a message if we are saying that only we are uh, speaking the name of a particular person or a student only then all the other students will not pay attention to it because they already know it is uh, it is to be it is for one children one child only okay so these are the unintentional distortions which can come uh, and which can affect the communication uh, the third factors are basically the characteristics of the receiver source of communication that is important then what is the content what is being said what is to be communicated is important is content then again what is the characteristics of the receiver whether the receiver is persuadable enough persuadability is in there if it it is there then the receiver will receive the whole message the self esteem of the receiver to what they think about the message uh, their ego to you right? know that is very important and the if the uh, the receiver has some kind of uh, limitations we can say for example the vocabulary is not very strong <clears throat> uh, as as we can say uh, we can even talk about uh, what we are doing right now uh, you all are the receivers i am the source and the communication if uh, somewhere you feel that uh, <clears throat> the kind of english my pronunciation or the words i am speaking are not familiar to you or my pronunciation is not exactly what you pronounce that particular word as then you may not be uh, able to uh, understand whatever i want to communicate you know that can be limitation that can be my limitation too okay so uh, if the uh, if the uh, intelligence level is different if the attention level for example if we are uh, sitting face to face maybe the attention level will be more because i am able to see you uh, in front of me uh, we are able to <clears throat> see the uh, attend uh, we are able to uh, see uh, and observe by our own eyes to whether everyone is attending or not okay but in this online sessions uh, which in which we are sitting far apart and sometimes when i am presenting the screen i am not able to see each and uh, every student in front of me so uh, that will be uh, the limitation even if you are not able to ask the question in a particular manner and i am not able to understand the kind of pronunciation or the word again that is a limitation the limitations can be from both sides from the source of communication to the receiver too so these are the different factors which influence the effectiveness of a communication source the content as well as the characteristics of the receiver too then for effective communication some points which are very very essential is first especially when i am talking about the head teacher or the different teachers they should know their objective what is the objective of communication what is it that you want to communicate which objective needs to be fulfilled by communication that objective should be very much clear and the source the sender should understand who is the receiver to whom the message is being conveyed 
if i understand the capacities the competencies uh, the uh, knowledge background uh, the socio economic background the terms i am speaking uh, and the understanding level everything about the receivers then i will be able to communicate in the more efficient way so knowing the receiver is very important for example i have already talked to our course uh, um, coordinator dr jagdamba sir and i asked him who are the students who will be uh, attending the session and he said they will be most of them will be working uh, teachers from uh, nigeria most of them will be so i understand and i know who are the receivers i know that you have a background of school i know that you have already uh, read the study material i know that you can understand english and especially because uh, we as indians english is again our second language it is not our first language so the pronunciation we are making is altogether different from how uh, people from us and uk must uh, uh, have spoken so uh, i i uh, i understand and i uh, take it, it that way that you people are able to understand the kind of english i am saying and that is possible only when i know who the receivers are again the head teacher needs to have the clear message in understandable term the terminology you are using should be in such a manner that the message is very very clear it should not be in a very vague and um, an amb ambiguous message ki no one is able to understand what is to be conveyed the message should be brief to sometimes when we uh, speak in detail sometimes when the message is written in a very uh, detailed note the basic nature the basic objective of the message uh, gets lost in between so the head teacher needs to be very brief for effective communication and not only what is to be communicated but what is to be achieved that is the complete picture need to be conveyed by that message and best way to communicate should be identified and when we are talking about way of communication so there are different channels there are different medium there are different ways which we have already discussed one to one group direct social organizational which kind of communication we want to do uh, whether the communication should be in the form of a circular whether the communication uh, should be in the uh, form of spoken words whether the communication should be uh, in the uh, form uh, of a informal discussion in a meeting so what is the best way to communicate and it depends upon what we want to communicate if i want to communicate about the examination timings so as a head teacher i need not go to the uh, each and every class and announce the examination timings uh, i should uh, talk about it to the examination controller or the vice principal who in turn will tell the different class will send notices or information to the different class teachers and the class teachers will announce in the class about the examination timetable okay so the way to communicate now how we are communicating especially for the head teachers it is very essential that what is his or her attitude behavior gesture if our gestures are something that uh, uh, we don't uh, consider the different subordinates equally i won't be able to gain their trust if there is no understanding my gestures uh, show my supremacy or if my behavior is very indifferent or if my attitude is such that i give a hell damn to it so such kind of attitude behavior a gesture uh, that will hinder my communication so if we want the communication is effective we should have a very positive attitude we should have a caring behavior uh, a behavior of sympathy empathy too and our gesture should be such that uh, they uh, they create a positive aura Uh, I, i don't know uh, whether what kind of uh, gestures uh, i am able to present in front of you but uh, somewhere and somehow i feel as an individual that uh, i am very much aware of what i am doing and i want all of you to listen to me to learn something and if there are any queries you need to get back uh, to me and you need to uh, ask some questions or share some experiences and for that i am very very enthusiastic 
so the enthusiasm should be clearly visible in not in my voice in my eyes but in the messages too and the uh, head teacher needs to be inspirational uh, to um, so that everyone to whom he is giving the message is inspired enough not only to listen but to start working then listening carefully is very essential not only the receiver need to listen uh, attentively or carefully but even the head teacher who is the sender who is the source of the message if there is any feedback if there is any back message again so he or she needs to listen it carefully to understand what was lacking and for that effective feedback should be used whatever feedback we, we receive from the students or the teachers or the subordinates or the parents or the society or uh, higher of, uh, officials these feedback should not only be noted down but whatever suggestions are given if there is any lacuna any drawback any change to be done that should be made use of and we all know we can't uh, uh, change attitude in a single day but we can change our behavior to change the receiver's attitude changing the attitude takes a long time and uh, but it is possible by changing the behavior the way a head teacher behaves while communicating with the subordinates if uh, if the head teacher is behaving in such a manner that he is the supreme power and all the orders are to be given by him or her only and all others are at the receiving end and they don't have any say then the subordinates or the teachers uh, will have uh, such kind of attitude development that the head teacher is a very arrogant individual and the leadership style is very uh, hitler type style we can say anarchy uh, monarchy and anarchy we can say uh, but if we want that all we gain trust of all teachers uh, we understand each other i understand the needs of the teachers their competencies their capabilities their willingness uh, their attitudes for that i have to change my behavior the more positive behavior is in the communication the more effective the communication will be we all know that behavior is very much important because in this word i i uh, no, normally i speak a particular sentence which is in hindi but i will translate it in english uh, in this whole word uh, people come and people go nowhere no one is here to stay for long but what is most important is our behavior because that behavior is the one which is uh, which is not only responsible for uh, our today's uh, presence or position or what we do but it is also remembered long after we are gone from this world or we are transferred from a particular place or a school so the behavior is very important in communication if we want the communication to be effective our behavior should be very positive enthusiastic inspirational understanding one okay and uh, uh, along with it we can talk about uh, how effective communication should be done especially in the staff meetings we are uh, talking about head teachers as school leaders and in this uh, we are particularly talking about communication and uh, as a head teacher the most communication is being done especially in the staff meetings where uh, different agendas are uh, put down and they are discussed for the betterment of the school and for the progress of the school and the progress of the children too so there can be three different uh, stages in effective communication in the staff meetings the one is the planning stage uh, the planning stage is the one in which <clears throat> what is the agenda of the meeting and to whom it is for who are the people who need to attend it so it is all done in the planning stage where the notice is uh, with the uh, notice along with the agenda the crisp agenda the clear agenda it is put and along with it what is the date on which meeting will take place what is the time of the meeting and what is the venue of the meeting it should always be written in the notice and it should include the signature of the head as well as 
uh, uh, copy to those person a name of the persons who need to attend for example there is a staff meeting related to sports competition in the school so it need not include all the subject teachers but the subject to teachers who are house masters to who are in charges to and who are responsible for some or other kind of sport to they need to attend the meeting so along with the coaches and along with the sports officer and along with the sports teacher their uh, name should always be written in the name of the attendees along with it no uh, if if any notice uh, sometimes the emergency arises and urgent notices are given in very short notices are given but for effective communication it is better that the notices are sent at least two weeks in advance 14 days in advance so that the collection of material and information can be done well in time and the attendees who are supposed to attend the meeting they too come prepared about the agenda and before the meeting a consultation should be done uh, within the core committee uh, by the head teacher so that what will be the agenda what are the things which are to be communicated and discussed about what all are the requirements we need who should attend the meeting all these consultations can be done before the meeting this is the planning stage the next stage is the execution one execution stage is the one in which the discussion is done in the staff meeting but all the discussions need no, need to be addressed to the chair it is not that each and every individual teacher sitting uh, alongside or talking to each other and discussing among themselves then the agenda can't be discussed in a proper manner if we want the meeting to be effective uh, if we want the communication to be effective it is essential that uh, proper directions are given that all discussion need to be addressed to the chair and i will will be listening very attentively and after discussion after suggestions the final word will be from the chair whoever is the chairperson of that meeting it may be uh, a head teacher it may be uh, if it is related to examination the examination controller can be the chair and what language should be used that should be clear and every individual attendee of the meeting should be given equal right to voice their opinion it is not that some are mere passive listeners only then why they are called effective communication will be only when they are are senders and receivers and there is feedback to okay so it is not that only one should be the initiator of the message and is speaking only all the individual attendees have equal right to voice their opinions and uh, there uh, some rules can be made like that mobile phone are switched off because we see then the mobile phone are switched off everyone everyone's attention is to the what message is being conveyed what is the agenda which is being discussed uh, sometimes when we uh, when we organize a meeting we see that if mobile phones are allowed you know those most of the people are either talking to someone or playing some game or searching the uh, surfing the net i must say not searching the net surfing the net and facebook and twitter and what not okay so the execution of meeting uh, should be done in that way for effective communication and not only that the meeting is being held and executed in a perfect manner it is also essential that it should be followed upon and for follow up basically the most important one is what are the minutes what are the minutes of the meeting what was the agenda what was said by different individuals uh, how uh, what was being addressed to the chair what was finally decided along with it the title of the meeting the date the time and the venue and the attendees who all were attending the meeting their names as well as their signatures and sometimes even the ones who were called for the meetings but they couldn't attend the non attendees their name should all, also be written so that if there was uh, some other kind of work being uh, performed by them during that time they could be uh, informed about uh, the meeting minutes afterwards okay and then Uh, what decision is being taken that should be announced and if there is any new agenda which comes it should also be uh, taken uh, into uh, uh, and it can be announced that it will be discussed in the ne next meeting or the new agenda it has emerged from the today's meeting only or any other matter which is of important all these needs should be written in the uh, follow up once 
and along with this uh, the last part we come to that is about communication and negotiation okay uh, we are talking about communication but uh, along with communication sometimes it happens uh, that uh, uh, the communication when the communication is going on be it uh, uh, inter school or intra school okay when the different schools are communicating or when uh, different uh, uh, committees of same school or teachers or parents or uh, students are communicating with each other sometimes the communication is not always in the same direction or positive direction so whenever such situation comes that uh, people are not Uh, supporting or voicing the same opinion they have some differences between them uh, then negotiation should always take place and we can say that negotiation is a back and forth communication and in such a way that uh, all individuals who are not agreeing to one point they should be given uh, some uh, time and place to speak their voices to speak their opinion uh, such that they reach a uh, re they reach an agreement okay the process in which back and forth communication is being allowed to reach a uh, agreement that can be called as negotiation we have seen that it is not always in uh, always in the communication system or in the meeting that every individual has a uh, same common interest sometimes they have different interest for example if there is a meeting regarding the uh, regarding the organization of a cultural activity or 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 celebrating a national festival or a national day so there may be different teachers some may say that our courses are not yet complete the preparation for the uh, celebration will take a long lot of time and the classes and the students academic progress will suffer there may be some teachers who will say that only classes classes and teaching is not important the for the overall personality development of children there should be some uh, way for expression of their inner feelings uh, so uh, celebration in the form of songs and dances and performances should be done they should be given time for that uh, there may be some uh, teachers or some students who will say that during these uh, uh, festivities as we have holidays so we won't come to school to uh, practice and all so all have different interest and uh, uh, their interest are opposed to each other in some cases so in such cases negotiation need to be done and for negotiation uh, reliable data and information which is up to date which is accurate it needs to be collected for example that the festival comes on this particular day and the students can come uh, to practice after the school hours and uh, along with it as the examination is not very near examination is, is after a month or so though so uh, the courses can be completed easily in that particular time and the celebration won't hinder in their academic progress so all these up to date accurate reliable data reliable information needs to be collected first fair next the participants and the involved parties if there are students who are saying we won't come in the holidays there are teachers who are saying we have to uh, finish our course there are teachers who are saying the students should be given some outlet for their inner feelings and the celebration is very important so the participation and involvement of all the parties on this issue is very much essential and every negotiating party should be given opportunity to present and argue their case the student should be given time okay in, these are holidays and we are going to celebrate with our parents we are going to a different place so how many students are going not the whole school is going there may be a handful of students who are going on vacations okay so their uh, argument should be listened they should be uh, uh, allowed to put their argument the teachers who are saying that our courses are not complete so they should be given opportunity to speak how many teachers have uh, yet not completed their courses or don't won't be able to do it uh, before the examinations which particular class which particular uh, subject or topics can it be uh, done in that particular time and then others wants to so everyone every party who have different opinions and different interest they should be called upon and they should be allowed to present their views and uh, door should always be uh, kept open for further consultations 
and is if there is any doubtful data if there is any doubtful information for example uh, uh, some students say that uh, everyone is going on a vacation but when you inquire when you talk to the parents when you ask individual students so there are only four students who are going on vacations more than 95% students are still in the school during those days so the relevant information collection is very essential and uh, uh, effective negotiation should be done so that there is order self discipline and responsible behavior not only among students only but teachers parents as well as other members of the society too so uh, negotiation is very important um, in this particular unit uh, we try to discuss what is communication how communication should be done what should be done for effective communication and uh, how staff meeting should be held and uh, what is the need of negotiation too okay these are some points which we discussed uh, now i would like the students to ask questions if any or their suggestions anything they would like to we have ample time for that i hope i finished in time thank you ma for the presentation thank you dear i would love to know whether you uh, whether the discussion has gone in the right direction whether i was able to communicate uh, and how as receiver you have received it yes you have communicated okay well can i know your name please i'm muniba sufian okay and uh, you are working as a teacher yes ma which subject do you teach physics huh physics physics oh oh we have science teachers in our group so good to know that any other individual any other I participant i have a question ma okay yes under organization of this staff meeting how the staff meeting should be conducted Uh, maybe you i'm not said, able to uh, understand uh, can you either talk loudly or can you write it down uh, i'm not I able said, to under how the staff meeting should be conducted staff meetings you are asking yes the question here is at the planning stage you at said, the planning stage uh -huh. yes you said the principal should what should have consultation before the meeting My question here is that is it before planning the agenda of the meeting he should Yes 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 this is the planning he part have the consultation and to whom should he consult is it the authority or the teachers he is working together with his coworkers Okay I I got your question I understood the question yes you are talking about the planning stage and you want to know uh, with whom the consultation should be done okay the we are talking about the staff meetings and the three stages of it okay before execution the planning part is done and during the planning part the head teacher especially the head teacher if he is the one who is conducting the meeting they should exactly know or decide upon what the agenda is if the agenda is to talk to all the teachers about a discipline problem in the school or about the completion of the courses at time okay completion of the courses at time so to conduct a meeting before the execution the planning should be done with the in charges not every individual teacher they would be called to the meeting but what should be agenda and what should be talked in the meeting what needs to be communicated a prior consultation should be done with the core team of the school in which the head of the institution the next in line which may be the vice principal as well as examination in charge or the uh, or the uh, uh, conveners or the in charges of different departments for example there may be some in charge of science department there may be some in charge of maths department okay so the in charges and the vice principal or the examination controller can be consulted before the meeting to decide upon what are the different things uh, what are the different points which need to be discussed 
during the meeting. Uh, Thank I you. hope I was able to answer. Yes, the question is answered. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Thank Any you. other participant? Okay, if there is any part participant who has conducted meeting himself or herself, you are the one who has called the meeting. If there is someone, uh, you can please share your experience. Any Hello, participant? Ma. Yes. I want to share my experience about how meeting is being conducted in our own school. Okay. Before the meeting, before the agenda was stated and the meeting is to be held, the, the principal usually has a book. He assigned when one of the teachers to go around with a book to various classes. Any teacher that will be available for that meeting will write his name down and his signature will be there and it will be dated. Usually in each and every class, we used to have two teachers, the main teacher and the assistant teacher. So anyone, any, any one of them that will be available for the meeting, two of them cannot be at the same time in the meeting because the class will be leave idle. So yeah. any of them that will, that will be available for the meeting, either the main teacher or the assistant teacher will, will, what, will write his name down and his signature will be there. After the compilation of that book, the book will be returned to the head teacher. The head teacher will glance through the book and know the people that will be available for that specific meeting before the meeting is to be held. So when the meeting goes on, anybody that is still that is available for that meeting and what is will take his name on that book that is already presented to the word head teacher. So the meeting will normally take place. The agenda of the meeting, the execution of the meeting and the follow-up that you have already taught us now, all that will be done. So after the meeting, the head teacher will advise us that any of us that is being available for the, in the meeting should pass the information to the that person that <laughs> is left in the class to handle the class before you come back <laughs> from that meeting. That is usually how we used to have our own meeting in our school. Very nicely presented. Very good. And and one thing which uh, caught my attention was very good. If both the teachers are invited for the meeting and are present there, the classes will be uh, suffering. There will be no one to take the class. So it is very essential when the meetings are being held. The timing of the meeting should be such that the classes are not disturbed. Okay. This is very essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You presented in a very detailed manner. Any observation from any other participant about what she spoke? We still have some time left. If there is any observation, any addition you want to do. No questions? Hello, any question from anyone? Jagdamba sir, huh? are you there in the meeting? Yes, huh. yes. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, you want to say something? Yeah, ah, thanks okay. for today's presentation. It has been wonderful. Okay. Thank mm. you. 
you're welcome uh, i hope yeah. i was uh, uh, i was audible enough and you were able to understand what i was speaking uh, no question it has been all clear okay thank you thank you so much uh, we will meet again on 15th yes, i have got two more sessions enough. Welcome. Welcome. If there is any query or any question, you can write in the LMS. Maybe it is developed uh, in such a way that your queries will be there and then we can post answers. Uh, sir, there are no more questions from the participants. Uh, can we end now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. You can end. Uh, okay, dear students, so in case there are no more questions, so the session ends here. Best wishes to all of you. Keep learning and asking and keep sharing. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, dear. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.